Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, lie back, chill if you will, and listen to this podcast and hopefully it'll help you, you know, bring you somewhere soft and cool and easy and hopefully even make you fall asleep. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. Or it could give you a soft and warm feeling. Sure. Whichever your preference Whatever you're after, yeah. Amanda, we have not posted uh, an episode for a bit because I felt under the weather and I didn't really have a voice. Mm -hmm. That's true. So we did not post. So you're going to get two this week to make up for last week not having one. And thank you to our patrons who have been hearing a lot of content, actually, uh, or, or even watching a lot of content, because we've been really upping our Patreon, Patreon game. Mm-hmm. And um, we just got back from a wonderful trip that we were on. And we got back from pod camp. I didn't know if you want to talk about oh, that, Oh, of course, too. yeah. So yeah. We, we... Lots to talk about. So much to talk about. Uh, we, we participated at pod camp, and we were able to... Uh, bestow some podcasting knowledge to potential podcasters. So thank you for being there and listening to our panel discussion and our session. So PodCamp is a, for those not in the podcasting, you know, world, um, even though you're listening, you, that that might be the the breadth of what you do with podcasting and or you may be a fellow podcaster. PodCamp is sort of a conference uh festival, more of a conference that happens uh, usually this time of year in Toronto, but they haven't had it. So it was nice to uh, to kind of get back into it. That's right. We were able to participate in front of a live audience mm-hmm. and we got some great responses. I want to thank everybody at PodCamp uh, for putting that on. I did a panel. You did a, a session. A session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling well enough to do the panel. So Amanda said, don't worry, I'll hold the fort. And she certainly did. I did my best. You did. Awesome. Speaking of awesome, we just got back from a wonderful trip. Amanda wanted to take me on a trip for a, you know, um, what do you call it? Like an important birthday. They call it something. a Milestone. Milestone birthday. Mm -hmm. And so Amanda's like, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I'd really like to go back to Hawaii. And so she. To which I said, I don't know if that is going to be possible. Because getting there is not, not cheap, is it? Not from Toronto. No. However, nor is it short, but um, our dear friends at YYZ Deals, uh, which is based out of Toronto. So um, anyway, it's this this guy who had a has a travel blog. He's had it for many, many mm-hmm. years, and I've been a big fan, and we've certainly taken lots of trips that have come up. Sometimes their flight glitches, but more often they're, um, you know, really just oh, look, they're selling these for cheap for the next mm-hmm. week or so. And it's he's not sponsored by anyone. He's not selling anything. It's just a guy who loves to fly. And he just he just shares that knowledge. And I should mention, though we follow it on yyzdeals.com, because YYZ is our airport code, mm-hmm. he also has versions for YUL, y, mm-hmm. uh, YVR, YVR. Uh, Calgary's, I can't remember. Yeah, so um, different ones across Halifax. Canada. There, he, so look, type in your airport code if you live in Canada and then deals.com and see what deals you might get. They're not, not a sponsor. A sp- yeah. <laughs> it's not a sponsor of the show. We just happened to have used it a few times. We used it last time we went to Hawaii. Yeah. Very similar flights, very, very inexpensive flights, mm-hmm. and this time as well. Um, it's for people who, you know, you may have your eye on a few places in the world. Um, but you have some flexibility. It's not for people who need to book a trip a year in advance for their two week holiday in June or whatever. It's not for that. It's, it's more like, wow, there's a deal on, can we make it happen? Do you think we can go? Yeah. I think we can make it happen. Yeah. Whatever. So we booked these, I think in November and, uh, we went to Hawaii before with them. We went to Italy a long time ago That's right. on a crazy trip. That was, Crazy. Um, Because it was supposed to be, you had to leave from New York to Milan and then anywhere else in Europe to anywhere else in the world. And it was like 300 bucks. It was... It was great for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. And so we had, we had points to get to New York. So everything So we went to New York, we flew to Milan and then we uh, didn't end up doing the next leg of the trip, which was to India because I had a theater contract, but we did the Milan part and it was great. Yeah. Five days in Italy. Can't beat it. And so we went to the island of Oahu. We did. And then Amanda said, 
we were speaking with friends who... This past trip, I should say. This past trip. Not right? while we were in Milan. No, no. This past trip that we just got back from, we went to the island of Oahu. And for me, Hawaii is a very special place. I just mm. love it. There's something about those particular group of islands that really speak to me. They're very magical. They're very magical. And we have good friends who also love Hawaii and actually introduced us to to their love of Hawaii. Yeah, they were going to go on a honeymoon to... Thailand. Yeah, to Southeast Asia. But at that time... There, there was, was something going on with Thailand, I don't remember. So they decided not to um, a month or two before and instead rerouted and went to Hawaii and fell in love with it. And they've been back, I think, four or five times. So they m- they made their love sort of... trend. You know, we, we were curious and yeah, we went... we got to hear about it from them. And uh, so... Uh, in, I think, 2018, we went to the Big Island. So the four major islands of Hawaii, starting from left to right, are Kauai, Oahu, Maui, and the island of Hawaii, known as the Big Island. Um, and there's Molokai and Lanai in there as well. And also Nihue, yeah. but, um, which are smaller islands and that do have populations on them, but much smaller. Sure. Um, so... In I know, I was loud on that one. That was Sorry really about that. Abrupt. Yeah, so, yeah, wow. Uh so in terms of places that we could go, mm-hmm. um those four are the were the ones that they're the ones that have the, the airports and or the, you know, domestic lots of flights in and yeah, whatnot. Not lots, but depending on the airport. So yeah, um a few years back we went to the big island. It is the biggest of the four. We The way we did that island, we had a week on that island and we would sort of do three days in one location and then drive in a direction for an hour or so and then three days in the, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, So we got these tickets to Oahu and uh, for those who don't know Hawaii as well, um, that's where Honolulu is where the very famous Waikiki Beach is. The North Shore. The where North a lot Shore of, is beautiful as well. A lot of surfing happens yeah. in that area One as like well. One of like the great surfing capitals of the world is the North Shore of Oahu, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and um, just thinking what the other great surfing capitals must be. Cape Town, the Gold Coast of Australia. California. Yeah, California. Um, off the shores of Portugal have really, mm. really large Brazil waves. Brazil as well, I Brazil think. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. In any event, um, so uh, we realized that we had booked just the way the flights worked out. I wanted to go for a decent, I wanted to go for at least a week. Right. And so we booked Oahu, but it is a smaller island, and we kind of thought, maybe we don't just stay on Oahu. Actually, it was Matt, our friend Matt, who said, if you drive to the north part of the island, you can see the other island, Kauai. You can see Kauai, which is the most, the leftist most island um, on no, a map. Isn't, isn't Nihu? I guess, Ni- well, Nihu's sort of under it. But oh, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. But yeah, I guess sure. Nihue is, is even more left. But anyway, um, and I said, well, if you can see Kauai, maybe we could go. And both he and Melissa said, that's a great idea. You have You have almost, I think, nine days or 10 days. Why don't you sort of split it up? So that's what we did. Yeah. So we flew into Oahu, had a night in Oahu, and then got on a plane the next day and went to Kua- It's a 20-minute flight. Yeah. Um, however, it takes you much longer to get to the airport, stay in the airport, than the actual flight itself. To wait for the plane. Yes. And actually, more than once, we the first time we did that flight, we got to the airport early enough that they just put us on an earlier plane. Right. And then the second time, we got on the wrong line because we thought, oh, this is our flight boarding. And our... Our they ticket, weren't, our they ticket, weren't very timely flights. Our tickets wouldn't scan, and that's how we figured out that we were trying we're to get... We're the people a, in the line trying to go on the wrong flight. But, um, yeah, they sort of leave when they leave kind mm-hmm. of thing. And uh, although it was really lovely flying Hawaiian Air. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we went to Kauai, and we went to the north shore of Kauai uh, in the town of Princeville. Mm-hmm. And sort of the famous beach there is Hanalei Bay. And uh, there's lots of beaches up there. And the that interesting, was gorgeous. The interesting thing about Kauai, or one of the things that I fell in love with with Kauai, they have a lot of chickens just roaming the island, all these chickens and roosters. Yeah. And so in the morning, there's multiple roosters crowing, cock a doodle doing. I don't know what you would call that. Mm-hmm. Crowing, uh, a rooster's crow, yeah. Uh, yeah, crowed like from, say, 7 in the morning till 9.15 constant crowing of these 
roosters to yeah. get you up. Yeah, they're, uh, they have taken over the island for sure. All because there was a hurricane, I think, in 1992 mm-hmm. that disrupted a chicken coop or two. Or several. Or several. And let loose these these hens and roosters. Which was not the story I was told. I was told that explorers, I was actually told, and this is completely wrong, that Portuguese explorers, of which there are a lot, right. um, that did come through the islands in the 16, 17, 1800s, um, they, that they had decided they would leave a bunch of hens and roosters on Kauai so that they'd come back and they'd have dinner or whatever. That's not, I don't know who told me that. That's not the story. I know that uh, explorers left pigs in Florida. Or oh, maybe boars. I'm conflating two stories. I don't know, but I know I've heard them le- leaving pigs so that when they return, they'd the have Spanish, some, yeah, maybe. The Spanish, I don't know. Like Ponce de Leon and Magellan. This could also all be just, you know, stories that get passed down that are not 100% did, accurate. Did you learn about the great explorers, supposedly, when you were young? Um, Amerigo Vespucci, which I now know Amerigo, is, yeah. is Amerigo. Vespucci, no. Vespucci. I didn't, maybe I did, but I, w- I didn't really. We all had it. to do projects on them in like grade four or five, and I did Ponce de Leon, oh. the Fountain of Youth he well, was looking for. Well, didn't work out. I'll tell you this. We saw, uh, speaking of fountains, mm. we saw several wonderful waterfalls. Oh, my God, beautiful. On our travels, including for anyone who can remember this, if you remember the television show Fantasy Island from its first incarnation with um, Ricardo Montalban, thank you, and uh, Hervé Villachez and mm-hmm. then other people who, who followed, when the opening sequence happens, you see a plane sort of flying and you see these two waterfalls that are kind of mm-hmm. in tandem. We went to go see those waterfalls. We did, yeah, and, they're beautiful. And, uh, we saw some wonderful waterfalls. The, of course, the roosters, the water. There was certainly a current. Uh, when we were there. Beautiful snorkeling in Kauai as well. Amanda's a good snorkeler. I'm I not, am. I'm not such a good snorkeler. What what fish did you see this time? I don't know fish names. Well, so. describe them to us. Um, I think I saw tiger fish. Okay. I saw lots of yellowy fish. Okay. Whatever Dory is on Finding Dory, Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. I saw her. But that's, b- Dory's blue. Okay. I th- But I think I saw okay. that. Okay. Mm-hmm. It looked like that with the eyes on the top and the sort of spout on the bottom. Yeah, I think I think that fish is called a tang. Like okay, the, like yeah. Like the drink? Yeah, like the drink. Um, I saw one fish that was really neat. It was like almost like a black and white. Um, Zebra fish? Oh, well, almost, but it was like speckled, like oh, little okay. stones of white. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also saw a very big... Um, Looked almost like what I would think an orange roughy would look like, like very kind of gruff, and uh, but it was gray. Okay, a gray roughy maybe. A gray roughy. It'd is be that... strange if you saw an orange roughy in Hawaiian <laughs> waters because orange roughy is an Australian fish. Is it really? I didn't know yeah. that. I thought it was a Chilean fish. That's Chilean sea bass. I get them mixed up because they're both overfished, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise known as a toothfish. Um, I saw one, a lot of ones that had like teeth things that like almost like shrimp like little things that like clean out the water like clean out like that scavenger for for clams or things like that are you talking about like whiskers on the bottom of their chin the whiskers like do the work do you know what that means do you know that i I know what you're describing but that's not what those whiskers do but i don't know they don't i don't think they're whiskers scavenge for fish but i could be wrong lots of great fish yeah i saw a school of of fish a school of gray fish yeah and i saw some sea urchin and i saw urchin ur- urchins urchins or ur- ur- yes i saw a couple of sea urchins mm-hmm. uh and uh yeah and then we saw some turtles we saw some turtles we saw some beautiful turtles yeah and monk seals <laughs> we did see some monk seals Monk seals on Kauai, turtles on oahu i thought amanda had seen the monk seal because we were <laughs> looking for a spot on the beach and what they do when these animals come to shore is oftentimes they'll put like a barrier, just a, just some some rope around them to give the monk seal and the turtles their space. And so no one sort of trips over them or, or disturbs them while they're mm-hmm. basking on the beach and resting. We had put our blankets down and 
you know, found our spot. And then a few minutes later, Amanda turns to me and says, oh my goodness, there's, there's this giant thing on the beach. And I said, yeah, that's the monk seal we walked by. And it had a huge sign that said, don't disturb the monk seal. I didn't Corded, see it. She didn't see it. And, and when she saw it, she was really surprised. It's I, a, it's a it's really big. It's quite taken aback when mm. you're lying on a beach and then a gigantic seal is next to you. It's, it's off-putting. Sure, sure. And we saw three turtles. Do you remember their names? Um, I only remember the one name. that The other ones were Hawaiian names, so I don't remember them. Which name stood out for you? Olivia Dawn. <laughs> Which is, they named these turtles uh, this, this. I can look. I might have photos of them. Amanda might have photos, but um, Here, I'll look. what they do is they cord off. They're green turtles. And what they do is they cord them off. And then they put little names and how old they are and how often they come to that particular beach, which was known as Turtle Beach. And we really drove quite a bit to go to Turtle Beach. And it, and it certainly rewarded us with a few turtles that were just hanging out. And uh, you can adopt. Another name was JP. JP. How old was JP? 23, right? JP was 22 to 27 years old. And what does it say about JP? Uh, JP's Hawaiian name is Mia Nui. JP first appeared at Lanakia in March of 2015. Since then, Mia Nui has become one of our most frequent visitors to the beach. Um. JP was the first new turtle to begin regularly basking here at Lanakia. I guess that's where we were. After three new turtles joined the Ohana, which means family, mm -hmm. in 2010. Take note of JP's tail growing longer, it says. The only obvious distinction between a male and a female. The turtle's nickname, JP, was bestowed in honor of Malama and Hanu's father, Joanne Pettigrew. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, Hanu means turtle in, in founder, Hawaiian as well. And, and so they name them and they allow you to sort of adopt a turtle. So, you know, you sponsor the turtle for conservation and preservations and for these people to be there. To, there's always someone on the beach ensuring that no one disturbs the turtles. And so... I have uh, more hot turtle news. I would love more hot turtle news. Okay. We also met Punahele, um, Hawaiian name Punahele, which means the favorite one. Punahele was a faint quarter-sized crescent-shaped indentation, has a faint quarter-sized crescent-shaped indentation on the second right lateral scoot. She is another of our Hanu turtle that can be found basking here year-round. During 2019, she appeared on the beach more than any other turtle. In 2020, Punahele undertook the 1,000-mile round trip migration to the French frigate Shoals to nest. She left Lanakai on uh, April 13th, 2020, took a meandering route. See, they have them all tracked. <laughs> and um, and then she built a nest, it looks like. And then she came back August 18th, 2020. There you go. That's how she spent her summer of 2020. So before Amanda gets to the third turtle, the one that we remember most, a friend of mine just celebrated his milestone birthday, and I wanted to get him something. And so, you know, it's hard because most of us have everything that we could possibly need mm -hmm. um, and want. And so what do you get someone who has that and you want to celebrate? So I'm going to sponsor our next turtle. Whose in, Hawaiian name is Ipo, but her English name is? Olivia Dawn. Yeah, we'll find out why. I'd and the reason I want to sponsor Olivia Dawn is she's just a little bit younger than my friend. <laughs> she's the eldest, and so he's still older than her. So Ipo, which was her Hawaiian name, means sweetheart. She's 47 years old. She weighs 230 pounds. In 2004, Ipo made the 1,000-mile round-trip migration to the French frigate Shoals to nest. We'll have to look up these shoals. It took her 35 days to get to the shoals. Data gathered from the time depth recorder attached to her shell revealed that Olivia Dawn made a noteworthy deep dive of 443 feet, which is 135 meters. That's nothing to snark at. No, I mean, I wouldn't snark at Olivia Dawn, a 47-year-old turtle. It was almost 11 years until she returned to nest again. She was the 101 of over 850 turtles recorded as nesting at the shoals in 2015. Ipo lives in our cove year-round. Whether she hauls out 
in the morning or afternoon, she can still be seen on the beach at sunset 86% of the time. I don't know who did that math. But so, so Olivia Dawn. Olivia Dawn likes that beach, which is nicknamed Turtle Beach. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so, if Lanakane, you, I think it's called. Yeah, if yeah. you are wanting to sponsor a Hawaiian turtle, do we have the website? Sorry, Lanakia Beach. Lanakia Beach, yeah. Yeah, I've said it wrong. Um, yep. Let me just look. Amanda will look, but th so um, they were giving us a lot of information, and they gave us some uh, some bookmarks, and they said if you want to sponsor one of the turtles, you All can. Right. And I'll, I'll say it, but it's gonna it's gonna take some doing. And I can I can I put the website. To sleep, so just know that if you're drifting off, don't worry. We will post this elsewhere. It'll it'll be in our show notes. But it's malamanahanu.org. Okay. So M A L A M A N A H O N U dot O R G. And Hanu Hanu is one of the few Hawaiian words that I, I that we have, know. I have committed to memory. Yeah, which means turtle. Which means turtle. What other Hawaiian words did you have you known? I know years? man is kane. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh you know, woman is wakine. Yeah. And I had a dream that I was singing it over and over. Oh, that's that's yeah, pretty. Two days ago, yeah. I actually got up. This happened to me again last night, but I didn't record it. But often I get up and I'll just record because there's songs playing in my dream and I'll just sing them into my phone. That's wonderful. I don't do anything with them, but well, as long as they're they're songs I've never heard before. And so I sing them into my phone. Amanda, I didn't know you were such a you songstress. No. Yeah, it happens. Lately, it's been happening a lot, but um, yeah, sometimes. I S woke up the other night and I had some scenes in a movie in my right. head. So I, I went downstairs and I wrote them. Um, Amanda and I, this is something that Amanda has done that I, I followed suit on and I really love, is when we get letters in the mail, um, bills or whatnot, we keep the envelopes as scrap paper and they're perfect size to jot things down. And so I wrote the scenes on these empty envelopes. That's why my envelopes are downstairs. Now, there's mm -hmm. one thing I want to say. If you're drifting off yes. and you have thoughts that come into your head, mm -hmm. I don't want people to get caught up thinking they have to go and write them down. There's a great author. Who's the guy that wrote that book with Dolly Parton? Crime author. James Jameson. James Jameson. Patterson? James Patterson. Said, I will not anymore, no matter what the idea is, get up from my bed and, and write it down. And often when you do that and you think, okay, I'm going to write down this dream or whatever, it's not as great as you think it is in the right. moment. <laughs> sure. You, you read it after. I wrote a whole stand-up routine once. I came downstairs and wrote it all down. I had dreamt it. I never read it again, but I don't think it was particularly funny. Well, there you go. I also want to mention that we're using new mics today. I actually Microphones. Microphones, yeah. yeah. So I used um, the monies that we've raised from our patrons mm -hmm. to purchase these microphones, and hopefully it'll take care of some of the sound issues of popping peas and other things that... Oh, really? Is that the idea? Well, yeah, you have... You move your feet a lot, mister. Do I? I don't, a, do, you, do you realize how much you move your no, feet when you talk? A, All I hear is, it's like oceans. All I hear is that sound, and I, I always think, oh, the mic's going to pick it up, but I guess it doesn't. I'm mimicking Hanu. Yeah, there you are you Hanu. Go. What are other, I wanted to say, speaking of Hanu, what are other, so Hanu, Wakine? Kane for Wakine or Wahine? Wahine, I think is it is. woman, yeah. 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 Uh, so what else do we know? Ukulele. Is ukulele. ukulele. Is ukulele as we know it. Um, Melakalikimaka. Is Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. It's not. It's, it's not. It's, but it's, it's just them taking the Hawaiian alphabet and right. saying Merry Christmas, which I never knew until recently. And um, speaking of the Christmas episodes or the, the holiday episodes, I'm going to take them down so I have them for next year in case our listeners are like, because sometimes I'll take them down. Like, we don't have the holiday episodes anymore. Well, I saved them for mm -hmm. December, so they'll be coming down very soon. So um, what I, other words do you know in Hawaiian? Oh, Amanda, you're like putting me on the spot. Um, I'm trying to think of okay. other words. No, uh, I know, what was falls? Falls. I think I knew falls in Hawaiian. Oh, and I don't it'll know. It'll take a second. Well, maybe we'll Kalua, do it next time. You know the the pork, the Kalua pork. Oh, okay. It's it's the style of. Uh, um, it's not made with Kalua, the alcohol. Right. It's what they call that particular pork. We learned that Waikiki means uh, bubbling water. Springs. And yes. Uh, Wailele, I think, is falls. Okay. Wailele. Uh, yeah. 
I'm and I and I'm Walia was the name of the fault, the Fantasy Island Falls, I yeah, think. Yeah, so these are some words that we you have. See, uh, you see that a lot, or Waimea, you see a lot in Hawaii. I did appreciate that they did have Hawaiian words mm-hmm. uh, alongside English words um, for you to, to sort of learn. A word we heard a lot was ono. Ono for something that's really tasty delicious. Or, or delicious. Yeah, yeah that's very right. ono. And in fact, watching the news in Hawaii, they do use these words in the news and the morning shows they'll you know they're speaking in english but then they'll they'll bring in the hawaiian words whenever they can shaka which is that hang loose kind of er, keep it easy mahalo is the one word that i used every day which is thank you mahalo so there yeah you know a few words and i think that brings us to the ultimate hawaiian word uh for our listeners because we're we're right to the end amanda and that's aloha and aloha means Hello, goodbye, and also love. And there you go. And thank you to our ohana, which can mean family, but also a community, a gathering of friends, or anybody that gives you that familial or family feeling. I want to thank uh, everyone we encountered in Hawaii. Everyone was so lovely. And to you, our insomnia family, uh, for joining us today. We will have an episode up tomorrow to make up for the episode you didn't get last week. Until then... We hope you were able to listen and sleep. Mahalo.